And these polyphenols, these are compounds that aggregate protein. They clump the protein and, they, and if they're present in higher quantities, they clump it more and then they cl uh, clump it so much that the protein cannot be absorbed. And polyphenols are not only found in um, grains out here, but they're also found in fruits, but also in fruit juices. Polyphenols are preventing the absorption of protein. The polyphenols are preventing the absorption of iron. So here, this phytic acid, this polyphenol, this soy protein, phytate, all of this bind to the iron that is present in food and reduce the bioavailability not only of iron but of several other minerals as well. So in other words, this is also an anti-nutrient. So influence of polyphenol on the digestibility of protein means that they reduce the capacity to absorb protein because they precipitate the protein. In fact, I don't know if any of you has eaten a raw persimmon. So it feels like your mouth is dry. The, it's it's mm. astringent because the tannins bind to the protein in your sal saliva and they make it dry. So the tannins are anti-nutrients and here it's showing that there is definite evidence that polyphenols reduce the absorption of minerals. But are there benefits of poly polyphenols? Because polyphenols are considered to be antioxidants. Even though the binding to iron is a drawback, it's a benefit because iron is an uh, important uh, oxidant, yes. It prevents oxidation of LDL, which, which is supposed to cause heart disease. It also oxidizes vitamin E or prevents the oxidation of vitamin E, regenerates vitamin E, it prevents heart disease, it prevents cancers, it reduces aging because oxidation is one of the reasons why our skin lags down. So how do we get the polyphenols? So fiber is fermented by the bacteria in the colon, it releases polyphenols, the polyphenols act in the colon, but they can also be absorbed. Would it be surprising to you to know that how much absorption of polyphenols is there is completely vague? The studies are so few. How much of these antioxidants we are absorbing, we don't know. And once you absorb them, are they really effective as antioxidants? We don't know that either. So what is a free radical? What is an antioxidant? So what's happening is that this is a healthy cell or healthy atom and the free radical comes in and takes away its electron. And here is an antioxidant, it's a good guy with nice glasses and comes and says, hey, let me just give you back the electron. So that's what an <coughs> antioxidant is. We used to think that the gut microbiome, the bacteria that we have is static, it's not gonna change. But that's not so, it says diet rapidly and reproduce, reproducibly alters human gut microbiome so this is a five day study. For five days, people were given either a plant-based diet, about 10 individuals, or they were given an animal-based diet. They checked fatty acids, they did uh, cultures, they looked at bile acids, and they wanted to see whether bacteria change. So uh, these were people with a body mass index from normal to a little bit obese. And this was a really well-designed study. Because if you look at the amount of fiber, the people on plant-based were eating a whopping 44 grams. Zero grams on the animal-based diet. Fat, 22 versus 70. Protein, 10 versus 30. So this could not be more plant-based vegan diet versus a total animal-based diet. What happened to weight loss? This is just a five-day study. A five-day study, both of them are e eating the equal amount of calories. Who do you think lost more weight? The animal-based group lost more weight. Statistically significant by day four, you could see it. Day four and five, compared to the plant-based diet. 